All right, guys. Well, I don't know what the hell just happened to our spectacularly gorgeous over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm, where this glorious October day in mid August in the last 30 minutes completely disappeared back to this nasty, gray, gloomy shit that we've been dealing with for the, I feel like, the last uh, three months. But anyway, it is Thursday, October, listen to me, October, Thursday, August 22nd, feels like October 22nd, Thursday, August 22nd, but I'm going to pretend like it is Friday, August 23rd. Don't know if I will be publishing this Thursday or Friday. I have a very busy day tomorrow, and I have a lot of time on my hands right now, so uh, I don't like to get disturbed or be rushed on uh, what is my particular favorite rant of the week, the Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup Rant, where we visit all of the various clueless fucking moron, uh, hopium, addicted, apocaloptimist, and all of that, uh, all of those, uh, that bullshit here on the mainstream media and medium.com and YouTube, uh, that every once in a while, we, we, we get thrown into, it's hard to do, uh, to get thrown into the opposite end of the clueless fucking moron spectrum. And, and, and I really thought that we were, were done with this. I, I feel like it was just yesterday that I, I was talking about the number one biggest clueless fucking moron in the history of the Doomosphere. And we all know who we're talking about. It, it is that clueless fucking moron, Guy McPherson, uh, who we've been hearing this unadulterated horseshit spewing out of this guy's, I don't know whether it's his mouth or his asshole, for how many years, talking about humans are going to be extinct in 2026, and then I think, when was it, like in April, he goes, well, I guess I was wrong, and, and, and then he goes into this absolute, he, 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 he flipped, he, he, he made a Kamala Harris trampoline flip, uh, it looked like Humpty Dumpty falling off the fucking wall in, in comparison. He goes from humans being extinct in 2026 to, what was it, collective human intelligence uh, what was going to save the planet. We're going to turn this freight train around by harvesting the collective human intelligence I guess the collection uh, did not go as well as Guy was hoping for. And so now he has flipped, well, not quite back to 2026, uh, but now he is saying 2030 that I guess in his latest video or some recent video uh, that somebody sent me uh, as my puke of the day. Uh, a buddy of mine, uh, we exchanged puke of the days, and this was his puke of the day sending me this video by this by this clueless fucking moron, uh, Guy McPherson, now talking about 2030, that, uh, that uh, humans are going to be extinct. And what does he say? The chances of humans, uh, and the chances of 8 billion humans, uh, well, I guess the chances of one single human surviving on this planet past 2030 are essentially zero, essentially zero. Uh, and, 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 and I guess the way he backs this up, he spends about nine minutes uh, calling up, uh, I, I don't know, eight or nine of these old reports. I, I mean, like like 20-year-old, 10, 20-year-old 
uh, reports uh, that he holds up as proof that humans uh, ain't, ain't going to uh, be around after 2030, not one of those papers, I guarantee fucking to you, uh, say anything on any level uh, uh, that patently ain't going to happen absurd. Uh, I guarantee you, uh, I could call up every one of those authors uh, uh, of those, uh, assuming they're still alive. Uh, the, these studies are so old. Not one of those people uh, penning any of those articles would agree with Guy McPherson uh, that humans are going to be fucking extinct uh, by, the, by the year 2030. Uh, Guy McPherson doesn't believe this shit coming out of his mouth. He never has. That little deep pocket sugar tit that he runs around with uh, flying him all over the goddamn planet uh, to to talk to clueless fucking uh, ass licking toadies still swallowing this shit. Uh, she doesn't believe that shit. I don't believe that shit. Uh, I have no idea why this jackass keep, keeps going on. But anyway, enough of that fucker. But but if you really want proof that we are doomed. It's that uh, it is in an ain't gonna happen rant. Uh, just the just profaning the name of my number one ever hero uh, in in the Doomosphere, uh, the the 180 degree polar opposite of Guy McPherson, and that of course is. William Reese, ecologist William Reese, uh, who understands how fucked we are and knows goddamn well uh, that there's going to be more fucking humans on this planet uh, in the year 2031 uh, than there are now. And, 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 and I don't believe it, it, it has finally happened. I, I think I did uh, one or two rants earlier this week with uh, Bill Reese's uh, latest uh, <clears throat> essay in resilience.org titled On Being a Snowflake in an Avalanche, the Catastrophe of Overshoot and How to Cope. How to Cope. Uh, so I, I don't know if, if this was coming from the editors of resilience.org. I, I heard him spouting this unadulterated horseshit at the very end of his interview uh, with Nate Hagens uh, that I was listening to. So at the very end, Bill Reese, uh, who knows as much as anybody on this planet uh, that turning this fucking freight train around ain't gonna happen comes up with this unadulterated horseshit uh, sounding uh, almost as full of shit as Guy McPherson. Oh my God, uh, am I here all alone. Uh, so what is Bill Reese's advice for carrying on? Uh, okay, we're just going to read two paragraphs down near the very down near the very bottom take it away bill reese and, e and 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 prove to the world that even bill reese has not pulled his head out of his ass <clears throat> take it away bill the political process in many countries particularly the us has largely been co-opted by powerful elites in the corporate sector those who fund pol politicians electoral campaigns expect and receive reciprocal favors an ecological plan b is not among them modern so-called democracies are plagued by regulatory capture by the corporate sector or other vested interests which have succeeded in kneecapping the u.s environmental protection agency for example and reversing many important environmental reforms passed since the 1970s. 
And here we go, guys. This is not... I, 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 maybe this is Bill Reese just yanking our chains, just having some fun. If we are to upend, to upend such corrosive activities and reignite democratic fervor, we may have to protest, riot even, by the thousands in the streets. Apparently, uh, Bill Reese has never read 1984, which was written in 1949, to find out how that works out. In the meantime, between now and thousands of us rioting in the streets, in the meantime, let's at least recognize that democracies can work only through the involvement of well-informed citizens. This is sounding a whole lot like uh, the uh, collective human intelligence. Well-informed citizens. Bill Reese uh, knows, uh, knows better than any uh, person on this planet. There is no such thing as, as a well-informed citizenry. Uh, maybe one one-hundredth of one percent are well-informed. Write those letters criticizing government stupidity, such as subsidies to both fossil fuels and electric vehicles, and encouraging constructive policies. Repeat often, make sure to attend all candidates' meetings at election time armed with sharply honed questions about proposed legislation or simply your favorite candidate's stance on climate or biodiversity loss or gross pollution or population planning, uh -huh. i.e. on overshoot. Yes, finding out your favorite candidate's stance on overshoot. There you go. In short, we have an obligation as citizens to be a public pain in the ass to errant senior politicians and wannabe leaders. There is just one problem uh, with uh, Bill Reese's advice to uh, how to carry on, and Bill uh, said it best himself. Well, Bill, you said it best yourself, the one problem with your suggestion. It ain't going to happen. Thank you, Bill Reese, uh, for summing it up in four words. It ain't gonna happen. Humans ain't gonna be extinct uh, by the year 2030. As much as I wish to hell they could, it ain't gonna happen. And a fucking well-informed citizens are not going to... What was it? Uh upend corrosive, the corrosive global corporatocracy takeover of governments. And they sure as hell are not going to riot by the thousands in the streets to uh, flip overshoot on its ass. I don't know... Uh, well, guys, I don't know if uh, my focus, I guess, went back out. Uh, who gives a shit? So anyway, those were really my two ones I wanted to uh, make sure I touched on. So we're going just to go down the list here. Uh, this is a... Fellow Jeff Masters, never heard of Jeff Masters. He is asking, when will climate change turn life in the United States 
upside down intensifying extreme weather events and an insurance crisis are likely to cause significant economic and political disruption in the U.S. sometime in the next 15 years. So, uh, this is this uh, fellow, I guess he's been a meteorologist for 45, yeah, 45 years. We're going to read uh, two paragraphs from this book link article from Yale University's Climate Connections. I guess this guy is maybe is a professor at Yale. I don't know about that. Anyway, it is inevitable that climate change will stop being a hazy future concern and will someday turn everyday life upside down. Very hard times are coming at the risk of causing counterproductive climate anxiety and doomism. I offer here some observations and speculations on how the planetary crisis may play out using my 45 years of experience as a meteorologist, including four years of flying with the hurricane hunters and 20 years blogging about extreme weather and climate change. These scenarios that I depict as the most likely are much harsh, harsher than what other experts might choose, but I have seen repeatedly that uncertainty is not our friend when it comes to climate change. This will be a long and intense ride, but, but, if you stick through the end, if you stick through the end, uh-huh, I promise there will be a rainbow. By late this century, by late this century, I am optimistic that we will have successfully ridden the rapids of the climate crisis, emerging into a new era of non-polluting energy with a stabilizing climate. There are just too many talented and dedicated people who understand the problem and are working hard on solutions for us to fail. Yes. What was that, Bill? I'm Reese. It ain't going to happen. Uh. Okay, let's see, what do we have next? Oh yes, you know, I am very embarrassed, I'm almost as embarrassed as I am uh, for Bill Reese and uh, this outfit called The Conversation. Uh, which I am quickly losing respect for. And this is an article by Ideal Baron, uh, Associate Professor of Political Philosophy, and Natalie Petarelli, Professor of conservation biology at the Zoological Society of London, and and I, I I can't make this shit up, guys. The name of the article is "A Window of Opportunity for Climate and Biodiversity." Now, of course, you, you know, looking at that, uh, looking at the name of that essay, it doesn't say where the window of opportunity is in uh, the middle of 2024. And so, I, I mean, I, I was still holding out, I was still holding a out, out a out a holding out, holding out that uh, they were going to uh, 
uh, explain how the window of opportunity for climate and biodiversity uh, had slammed shut about uh, 50 or 60 years ago. But no, that's not going to happen. Yes, as we have the United Nations, the United Nations will be teaming up to save the planet, and this will be a policy window not to be missed. Later this year, world leaders, world leaders will convene for two global conventions to tackle climate change and biodiversity loss separately. Yes, these upcoming UN conferences of the parties presents an opportunity to establish a joint, a joint work program to fill the current governance gap, address implementation issues, and foster innovation and synergies in climate and biodiversity actions. The window for action on climate and biodiversity is closing fast. This opportunity must not be wasted. And uh, so uh, we're going to let Bill Reese uh, explain to us about the United Nations teaming up to save the planet. It ain't going to happen. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Uh, well, let me... What do we have next? Just in <coughs> no particular order. <coughs> of course, the dog and pony show. Uh, I, I have to make one uh, nod to the dog and pony show. I guess called the Democratic National Convention talking about how the Democrats are going to save the planet. So, what is one of the key takeaways from day two of the convention? The Obamas. The Obamas. Yes. Do you remember Farrakh and Michelle Obama? Well, the Obamas say, 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 who is making a comeback with Kamala as the nominee? Yes, the H word is being reborn. All right, we're going to go down to Ecuador to see what is on the minds of Amazon Watch. Uh, you will not believe this. A year ago, Ecuadorians overwhelmingly voted to keep over 700 million barrels of crude oil permanently in the ground underneath Yasuni National Park. And yet, the government and Petro Ecuador have done almost nothing to implement the referendum. The country's constitutional court gave them till the end of August to end oil activities, close all oil wells and roads, dismantle existing infrastructure, and remediate and restore the rainforest. Their refusal to do this puts the region's indigenous peoples and the country's democracy at great peril. Take action now to protect Yasuni National Park 
join us in demanding that President Noboa respect Ecuador's popular vote and immediately end oil drilling in this biodiverse region. Yes, send a message to President Noboa urging him to respect the will of the people and protect Yusasuni and the rights of indigenous people. There's only one problem with, uh, with that. We're going to let Bill Reese explain the problem with uh, sending a letter to the president of Ecuador to save the planet. Ah, uh, thank you, Bill. Okay, again, I'm just going down, uh, ju just going down the, uh, the list, uh, what was that, was Ecuador. We're going to go from Ecuador to Mali. The trash in Mali's capital is piling up. Donkey carts are coming to help. And there you go. We're gonna, we're going to have donkey carts uh, cleaning up the streets of Molly's capital, whatever that is. These are some pictures of. Uh, this is what the streets of Molly's capital look like. But the donkey carts, the donkeys, are going to save the streets of Mali's capital, which is Bamako, Mali. Uh, of course, you're already talking about uh, the uh, donkeys being mistreated. Uh, local authorities do acknowledge the city has a waste disposal problem, but they blame the residents. Quote, Bamako is dirty because people don't care about the environment or their health, asserted Adama Conte, a deputy mayor. Yes, some residents agree and point out that there is no penalty for simply tarp tossing their garbage into the street. Yes, quote, said one resident, quote, instead of hiring a garbage collector who has to be paid, a lot of people wait until the rainy season to throw their garbage into the running water because it costs less. And there you go. All right, uh, I don't know if this is a picture of, uh, of the streets of Bamako, Ghana, or the streets of uh, St. Charles, Louisiana. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, we're going to go over to medium.com for this article, Reversing Climate Change. Really? Yes. This is from this fellow named Albert Bates. I, uh, I uh, think I've read stuff from Albert before. So Albert's, you know, he, like so many people at Medium and everywhere else, he, he spends about 50 fucking pages uh, t talking about uh, how fucked we are. And uh, then he, uh, and, and then he ends by quoting himself from 12 years ago, uh, talking about uh, how fucked we uh, were 12 years ago. We push the edges of that, meaning that climate stability, you know, as humans, with our cities redirected rivers, man-made deserts, and agriculture, but we also helped. We also helped Gaia recover. 
bypassing and even protecting huge expanses of rainforest and sacred untouched mountains. The balance our predecessors struck with our mother was a delicate one, and in a mere 150 years we destroyed it. Yes, but that equipoise may still not be yet beyond redemption. We just have to put the forest back and stop soiling our nest. There we go. We just have to put the forest back and stop throwing garbage uh, out on the streets of Mali. And then wrapping it up 12 years later here in 2024, well, it's not as simple as that now. With every passing year of neglect, half efforts and steps backwards, the amount of required, the amount of repair required and the bill grows, it is time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Time to roll up our sleeves and get to work for saving the planet. Bill, what do you think about rolling up our sleeves and getting to work to save the planet? Yes. It ain't gonna happen. Thank you, Bill. Okay. I see I've hit 30 minutes. Uh, let's see. Uh, what next do we have here? Uh, uh, we don't have time for that one. Okay, we have the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services not exactly saving the planet, but we're going to let the United States government uh, solve the devastating impact and the epidemic of loneliness and isolation in the United States. Yes, okay, loneliness. The epidemic of loneliness and isolation has now officially been declared an epidemic in the U.S. by the Surgeon General Vivek Murthy. Yes, but don't worry, Vivek has it under control. Uh -huh. Given the significant health consequences of loneliness and isolation, we must prioritize building social connection the same way we have prioritized other critical public health issues such as tobacco, obesity, and substance use disorders. Yes, we can see how well prioritizing tobacco, obesity, and substance use disorder epidemics how well they fixed those, and now they're going to put that same level of work to get rid of loneliness and isolation here in the U.S. Yes. Together, we can build a country that is healthier, more resilient, less lonely, and more connected. Bill, I understand you live in Canada, but could you uh, please tell the Surgeon General what you think of that? <laughs> well, that really... I guess uh, he wasn't going, uh, I, I guess Bill uh, wasn't even going to, uh, to bother uh, at, at, at that point. Uh, Anyway, what else do we have? What is the, uh, what is B up to, uh, this week? 
I wanted to spend some more time on this, but I'm running out of time. This is the uh, mysterious bee is not falling for this whole AI takeover horseshit. B has no patience for anybody claiming that AI is, is going to take over the planet. You know, B is a very prolific writer. Uh, so, what is the bottom line? Uh, why will AI not take over the planet? Peak oil will not only mean peak energy, but peak resources, and yes, peak AI as well, as the single biggest limiting factor of our civilization, petroleum production embarks on its long and undulating journey back to irrelevance. Starting around 2030, it will become physically impossible to grow global energy production further. Remember, oil is needed for all power plants to be built and remain operational, including renewables, nuclear, and hydro too, not to mention feeding the electric grid's insatiable hunger for copper, aluminum, and electrical steel. The end of the oil bonanza will thus mean the end of growth for AI and the rest of the economy as well, with repercussions to follow. There you go. Uh, okay, I did like uh, this one. I, I, I mean, I really did like this one. Uh, want to cool off and save the environment for free? Just open a window. The data behind natural ventilation and how simple window management reduces cooling costs more than the most efficient air conditioner. Uh, anyway, guys, I've got to wrap this up. I've gone over. I, uh, but I do want, I want to close uh, with this, I don't know, k kind of humorous, uh, well, what the hell? Um, uh, this was from, uh, this fellow, uh, Patrick Metzger, I like Patrick, talking about reincarnation and the two past lives I remembered reality may be more fluid than we know, and, and Patrick, and, you know, spitting this unadulterated horseshit uh, about, uh, uh, about getting uh, regressed uh, into past lives and remembering two past lives that never happened uh, now again, uh, I've had my rants on reincarnation, and I don't 100% uh, call bullshit on it, which is why uh, this was my comment, and I see I have 50 claps to this comment uh, in the last two days. This is my message to uh, Pat Metzger and anybody else who, who thinks that uh, they're going to be reincarnated uh, on, 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 onto this planet. Uh, like, what the fuck? Uh, anyway, take it away. Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles to wrap up this rant. My construct of reality tells me that I should be a hell of a lot more wor more worried about being reincarnated as a rag picker in a garbage dump in Ghana than whatever worthless, pointless existence I suffered in the past, which 
is the only reason I have not quaffed a fentanyl cocktail and gone to sleep, never to wake up. And uh, with that, uh, me and the little dog, me and that little dog, we're going to go quaff some pork and beans while we still can get out there and uh, enjoy your pork and beans while you still can because if you're still thinking that humans are going to be extinct or we're going to turn this freight train around we're going to let William Reese give you a reality check yes. it ain't going to happen Bye, guys.